So guys, welcome to lesson two and our final part of this email series that I'm sharing with you guys who are not able to attend our Skype group coaching program. So lesson two is all about what ensures a successful flight attendant interview. What does it really take to get your wings? Number one is mindset. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are right. This is a quote by Henry Ford, the owner of Ford Motors. Motors. And I really agree with this quote because if you think that you have what it takes, you are right. And also if you think that you don't have what it takes, you are also right. I can't convince you otherwise. So you better have your mind working for you instead of against you. Because our mind is a very powerful tool and we should use it to our advantage. You need to have a winner's mindset. So what does winners do? Winners simply don't lose because when they lose, they think of it as another way of doing something wrong. So now I am one step closer to being right. So that's how winners think. So every failure that you might, you might face when trying to be a flight attendant, trying to apply for the job, if you didn't get the job for the first time, then you gotta learn the lesson or else it's all for nothing. So just think of it as something you, you learned na, okay, so what did I learn on this failure? What are the lessons? Okay, so I figure out that going to the interview without having breakfast is not a good idea. Then chalk it up to experience and apply and adjust your strategy for the next time. This is how winners think. So half of our battle is won in our minds. So it, always, it always is a mind game in life. So it's always, that's why the quote, mind over matter is very, very popular because it's always uh, on your mind. If, even though the things physically are not yet there, but in your mind and your heart, you truly believe that you are a flight attendant, it will happen, believe me. And also you have to sell yourself. So having the right mindset, um, how do you do that? And having the right mindset. Um, if you are going to sell yourself, you have to be sold first. You cannot sell something that you, not, you do not believe in. If you know that this product is bad, then why would you recommend it to your other friends? So you can only sell something you truly believe in. If you really are 100% uh, sure that it is good. So here in applying for the position of a flight attendant, what you are selling is yourself. So you have to be sold on yourself. So every day convince yourself that you are good enough for this job. You have what it takes. This is your moment. Claim it. So that is how you sell yourself. Self-confidence. So let's say um, self-confidence really takes a big part role in selling yourself. But what does it really mean? So self-confidence simply means being sure. Being sure of who you are, what you are capable of, and what your worth is. The next thing that you need to know or you need to have is knowledge. So this is a quote by me. It's a personal quote. It's called, uh, it goes like this. Know your type of monster to be able, to be best able to slay it. So to be able to slay your monster, you should know what kind of monster it is. So this is just an analogy. So if your monster is a water type monster, then take it out of the water. Then you will be able to... Uh, uh, address uh, its weaknesses, you know, and know the certain points or the certain areas we're into attack. So this is also how I look into the flight attendant position. I need to know what it is I'm trying to get into, what it is that they want, so I could position myself, my, sell, uh, my selling uh, presentation in the way that I know that they would want it. And then I will go for the killing because I'm knowledgeable about it so you have to know what the position is all about and what is required to fulfill that role so that then you'll be able to demonstrate it show it and uh, prove to the recruiters that you have this certain qualities that they are looking for you also need to have the specific airline information 
it's not just about the role of a flight attendant and what they do. You also have to take some interest in what kind of airline they are. Know their history, who is their CEO, because you guys, this question is one of the trickiest questions I ever experienced. For the longest time I've been applying for the position of flight attendant in Qatar Airways, this question is always asked and the passengers, I mean the applicants, is always caught off-handed. And if you, believe me guys, if you don't know the CEO, you're not invited to the next day immediately because they have the privilege to pick those people who have knowledge about their company and those people who were just there because they just want it they just don't have anything else better to do during their day so this is very important guys the tagline so what are the famous taglines um, Qatar Airways it's world's five-star airline Philippine Airlines is your home in the sky so it's important that you know their tagline it's just a way to to tell the recruiters that you are genuinely interested in their brand, in their in their airline, and you want to be a part of it. Their number of fleets. This means their number of airlines that they have in their company. This is a nice to know information, okay? Because sometimes you never know if they're gonna ask you this or not. And destinations. So this is very common. Those agencies who conduct screenings before the airline HR comes, this is their favorite question. Okay, so you're applying for Saudi. What do you know about Saudi? And what do you know about Saudi? And what do you know about the destination? Where do they fly to? So these are the uh, default questions that agency asks of you. So it is important that you know this information. The name of the frequent uh, flyer program, for example, in Philippine Airlines, it's called Mabuhay Miles. In uh, Oman Air, it's called the Sindibad program. So this is very important because it's like you, you put yourself one step higher than the other applicants if you know all of these things. And you know, knowledge is power and just one bullet for you to be able to, you know, you know one of those bullets that you could uh, use whenever you need it to be able to sell yourself. The image of the airline and what their brand represents. So if you are applying for a low-cost airline, probably their image is all about adventure, having fun, being free, and being uh, able to fly whoever you are, wherever you are from, casual. So when you're applying for this, you make sure that you portray all these kinds of images or uh, all these kinds of um, qualities to be in line to what the airline is trying to project to the to the customers so if you are also applying for a traditional airline like for example philippine airlines they are very traditional they are the flag carrier and um so you would need to be able to make sure that all of your hair if it is tied up nothing sticks out because that's how it is they're a very formal classy and uh, that's the type of image that they want to portray very professional reliable you know so things like that is very important because it's kind of confusing if um you try to go and apply for example for air asia and then you are uh so uptight then you wouldn't fit to what they are trying to portray and what if you apply for philippine airlines and you are so casual also it's not a good fit so you are just doing yourself a disfavor if you are not going to research what the airline is all about the next thing that you need to have is the interview skills. English language, especially if you are working uh, for an international airline or even if you're working for a local airline, their passengers are international. So you have to be able to express yourself in proper English. I'm not saying that you should have the best accent and diction, be the next Miriam Santiago out there. It's just that you have to be able to understand and express yourself clearly so that you will not have miscommunications among the people or the people that you work with and that is a big no-no for the airlines so they try to gauge this skill that you have by talking to you and um making sure that you are uh you know they make they give you test exams english exams and they talk to you and you know try they are making sure that you are someone who could try to carry a conversation 
and also express yourself. Nonverbal communication skills. So do you know that 80% of the result of your um, interview is not really about what you say, it's how you say it and the body uh, language that you deliver it with and the body language that you are exhibiting in during the whole recruitment time that you are there. So this is very important. This is 80% of the uh, percentage to know whether or not you are in or out. So what this entails are eye contact, smile, posture, listening gestures like a nod at the right time, a frown, or a reaction when somebody's trying to tell you something. Have the appropriate reaction, okay? Listening skills. This means that you are able to really communicate, get what the person is talking about, and respond appropriately. So that's it, guys. This is the lesson summary for lesson two. What ensures a flight attendant interview success is your mindset. You have to have the right attitude and perspective, knowledge, what the position is all about, what is the airline all about, and your interview skills, communication skills, and also sell yourself. That's it, guys. I hope you learned a lot from this mini series that I have created for you. Make sure you tune into this channel for more details of the course coming up. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, guys. Fly with you soon. Mwah.